We have a lot to get to, including new information on Disney's Park Pass system. Hey guys, it's KJ. And John. Welcome to our channel where we do videos on... Disney! Motherhood and lifestyle. If you like this video, please... Give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Ding that notification bell. And leave us a comment. With that, John, what are we chatting about today? Well, it's not Monday, but we have a lot of Disney news and updates to give you, so we're bringing them to you a day early. And we have a lot to get to, including new information on Disney's Park Pass system, changes to some seasonal events around the theme parks, and how Disney is embracing technology once again to make our experience more enjoyable. But perhaps the biggest question of all, will any of this get the opportunity to happen? Perhaps the biggest news to come out of this week is the Disney Park Pass system and how that's going to work. Some important details you need to know. You will need to have a My Disney Experience account in order to access and make reservations. You will need valid theme park admission and you must link that to your My Disney Experience. And you will also need to link your resort reservation to your My Disney Experience. Your theme park reservation and your theme park admission must be on the same day for everyone in your party that is three or older. If you have little ones under three like we do, then you don't need to worry about them. Well, you need to worry about them, but not their reservation. And remember, you are limited to one park per day. I know it's a bummer. So that means no park hopping at this time. How long the no park hopping lasts is anyone's guess at this point. Disney is allowing future guests who are looking to book for 2021 to have park hopper add-ons. And there is a chance that sometime in this calendar year, in 2020, that park hoppers will come back. A lot will depend on how Florida's healthcare system is doing at the time. And if Disney is able to increase capacity at their parks. So if you're one of those families that likes to visit the Magic Kingdom during the day and have dinner at Epcot at night, as of now that won't be allowed. But this is the time to come up with a new game plan. Maybe hit the theme parks and then head over to Disney Springs for a meal or one of the resort hotels. It's worth noting you can't visit a resort hotel without a dining reservation unless you are already a guest there. So it's a real bummer. I'm gonna miss hopping on the monorail, riding around from resort to resort, you know, checking out different shops and the different hotels. I don't like the idea that if uh, we do go in a time where you still can't park hop, that we can't have dinner in Epcot every night. So there'll be some changes for us as well. But like John said, if we do go during this time, if we decide to go, if it's safe enough to go, maybe our trip will just look a little bit differently. So maybe we'll have dinner in Disney Springs every night or we'll have it in the park that we're currently in. Here's to new experiences. <laughs> we did go to Disney for our baby moon last year and our trip looked a lot differently than it usually did because as a pregnant woman, there was a lot that I couldn't do, but we still had a great time. We did a lot of things that maybe we normally wouldn't have done. Just be open-minded if you really do want to go that there are a lot of things that you can still do and still have a great time. So so let's dive into some of the key dates for the Disney Park Pass system. On Monday, June 22nd, if you have a resort reservation and valid theme park admission, like us, <laughs> you will be able to make your theme park reservations. So we're going to find out real soon how the reservation system works, if it's easy to use, how easy it is to get the Magic Kingdom, because I know that's probably what everyone's fearful of, that they'll have a, have a week booked at Disney World but uh, can't really get the Magic Kingdom more than one day if you even get it for one day. So we'll find that out in short order. Hopefully we get all the park reservations that we're looking for and we'll let you know how our experience goes. On Friday, June 26th, for annual pass holders that do not have a hotel reservation, you can make your theme park reservations. And on June 28th, for those of you that have park tickets but are not staying at a hotel, you can make your reservations for the theme park. So maybe you're going down to Disney and you're staying off property, but you have your park tickets. Sunday, June 28th, keep that day in mind. That would be the day that you can book your reservations for the theme parks. Also on June 28th, Disney will be accepting reservations for 2021. That includes resort hotels, ticket packages, and park reservations. And speaking of those park reservations, they can be made through September of 2021 if you meet the other valid admission requirements. Now, just because Disney is accepting park reservations through September 26th, 2021, does not mean that this system will be in place through September 2021. Right. I think they're just covering themselves in case they have to have it that way. And I think they're also just covering existing tickets and reservations that are already out there that extend that far. Considering Disney is keeping the park hopper add-on beginning of January of 2021, my guess is they're also expecting to be able to do away with the park reservation system by then too. We can only hope. And if you think we're getting ahead of ourselves talking about 2021, for those of you that are still looking to go in 2020, you can make those reservations later this year. Disney did not specify a date yet, but as soon as we hear it, we of course will put it in our Monday news video. So make sure you tune in. And once again, any 2020 reservations will be contingent on there still being availability left 
park reservation was. We keep talking about this mysterious Disney reservation system, but how does it actually work? The first thing you need to do is go into the My Disney Experience app and link all of your valid admissions to your profile. Link it to your profile? So what about me? And Winnie. Well, step two, if you already haven't done so, you should add friends and family to your profile. Under me would be John, and then I'd have KJ and Winnie. They would have their own valid park admissions. Now, she's under three, but using it if she was over, you get the gist. So everyone who's making the trip, you want to make sure that they are part of your party and have all the names listed and assign them their own admissions. So basically, you're creating your party. So when I go to make our reservations, I have to make sure that I select myself, KJ, and Winnie to create my party. Okay, so you selected your party... Then what? Well, so then it's time to select the date and park that you want to visit on that day. What about a time slot? Well, we found out that there is information that a time slot will be required. The details on that still seem a little bit fuzzy. We'll find out more in the coming days once it becomes live. On Disney's website, it says, this is the time that you can visit the park. I took this as you have a specific time slot that you can come to the park and then have to leave the park, meaning John and I get there and Winnie, we get there at eight and then we have to be out of the park by say noon or by four. And then the next group of people would come into the park from noon to four or from four to midnight. That's how I took it. I have no idea because it hasn't been specified and it's just speculation. I thought it seemed something like Rise of the Resistance where you have a window, obviously a much longer window than your Rise of Resistance window, but I thought it was something like that where this is your time slot, this is when you can come, but you can't arrive before X time and you must leave by X time. So that's how I took it. John took it a bit differently. So what did you think it meant? I have a feeling it could be an arrival time and I'm guessing that it will probably be a short window, maybe 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., maybe even 11 where the times are staggered by maybe 10 minutes. So if the park opens at 8 a.m., the 8 a.m. time slots, there may be 50 of those, and then they move to the next, which could be an 8.10 arrival on 8.20. My guess is they're doing this to stagger the entrance bag check area because what they don't want is when the park opens there's a mad rush and everything they're trying to avoid inside the parks so with social distancing they're getting at the main gates so if they tell you you can show up at 8 or maybe you can't show up until 8 40 they're getting people coming in smaller groups 10 minutes at a time and they're able to kind of space people out as they enter the park i would be surprised if anyone is really entering after 10 or 11 because i feel mm -hmm. like if you're paying for the park that day you're getting you're getting robbed of a lot of hours i would think that they're going to try to get everyone into the park in the first two to three hours of opening. So we'll see, as John and I mentioned, we do have a reservation for this year and we will be able to hopefully make the reservations on Monday, June 22nd. We'll let you know either way if we are able to and we will give you details on it. And I would be surprised if they actually do for lack of a better word, kick people out of the park. I know they do that for a very Merry Christmas and not so scary, but like we said, without there being park hoppers, to tell people they have to leave the park at a certain time after they paid a full admission, I don't see that happening. We'll find out, but I just don't see it happening. Speaking of not so scary, if you were wondering why we were wearing these t-shirts. Yeah, Mickey's not so scary Halloween party has been canceled for 2020. That comes as disappointing news, but with no ability to have state shows, fireworks, parades, and traditional meet and greets, it's not really viable to, for them to have a not so scary Halloween event. To ask people to pay a separate admission for a really scaled back event well basically you just be trick-or-treating down main street which is yeah. a lot of fun and we went last year and john that that was the highlight for him loaded up on the candy but even that <laughs> even that is very difficult to socially distance because everyone's crowding yeah. around those bins people are standing in lines and people are are you know taking scoops of candy so i think it's the right move i know a lot of people are going to be disappointed but there's really no other choice in the world we're living in right now tough to eat candy with a mask anyway <laughs> But again, all seriousness, they're asking people to keep their masks on at all times, unless eating or swimming, and people will be throwing candy at well, I'm eating, as I'm walking, you know, down Main Street, True. people will just be eating True. candy, pulling their mask off. Another ticketed event that Disney has also canceled for the time being are the H2O Glow Nights in Disney's Typhoon Lagoon. It's a ticketed event, it's a nighttime event that has been temporarily suspended, canceled. So if you had tickets for that or Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, you will be contacted, Disney said on their website, you will be contacted soon, at the time of filming soon, to talk about refunds and how that will work. So while you might be bummed about H2O Glow and Mickey's Not So Scary, if you are going to Disney World this summer and you didn't think you were gonna be able to hit up food and wine. Guess again. <laughs> because the taste of Epcot International Food and Wine Festival is a go and it's starting about five to six weeks early. When Epcot opens on July 15th, Food and Wine will be opening with it with more than 26 signature global marketplaces to choose from. 
and we've tried many of them. While this is exciting, one of the disappointing parts of this is the fact that there is no park hopping, so we're we'll probably only gonna get one try at this. Mm. Um, so that's the disappointing part, but the great part is you get to try it in July if you're going. John and I love food and wine. We did it a few years ago with mm -hmm. my sister and my brother-in-law. We had so much fun. It was so great. We love going. We love walking around, trying the different food. And go on an empty stomach. Mm, yes. If you missed Flower and Garden like we did, we were supposed to go in March, but we didn't get a chance because of the pandemic. There will be a little taste of Flower and Garden during Food and Wine. In the France Pavilion, there is going to be a Remy Topiary, and you can also get some Flower and Garden merch in the France Pavilion. So I think that's pretty cool. So if you missed it and you love your Flower and Garden merch, or you're bummed you missed the Topiaries, we love, well, I love the topiaries. I think they're really fun to take pictures with. And when I say with, I mean John is taking my picture with the topiaries. Yep, I'm the Instagram husband. And speaking of Remy, Remy's Hide and Squeak scavenger hunt is returning to Epcot. And something that is not returning to Epcot is... The Eat to the Beat concert series. Usually that accompanies food and wine, but not this year. Because they're trying to keep with social distancing and those concerts create a crowd. Speaking of things getting an overhaul, Disney is retiring their complimentary Magic Band system, and I know it is sad, we do love our Magic Bands that we get to place orders for uh, weeks before, sometimes months before we actually make those Walt Disney World. Why are you wearing a Magic Band right now? <laughs> uh, I always wear a Magic Band. I sometimes butt it against the doorknobs in the house. It doesn't do anything, but I just like doing it. <laughs> so again, Disney is retiring their complimentary Magic Bands. Magic Bands will still be able to be purchased. The reason they're doing this is because the My Disney Experience app is getting some innovative updates and you'll be able to do in that app on your smartphone what the Magic Band has been able to do for you for years. Things like unlock doors, get you into the parks, pay for items in the park. Last year when we stayed at the Coronado, where did we say? Grandestino? We yep. stayed at the Grandestino Tower. We tried that out, right? We tried our mm -hmm. phones as the key. For those of you that don't know, we are cast members, so we don't use magic bands for anything really other than a room key, so we just throw them in our bags for the most part. So we decided, why not try the phone, because we always had our phones out, and it actually works really well. But don't worry, those of you who are still clinging to your flip phones, you still can purchase the magic bands in 2021, and it's going to be a slow retirement. We've still got half of 2020 to go, so you can still enjoy the magic bands for another six months or so. Or you can wear them like John around your house and try to open your doors. So as you can see, there's a lot of changes coming to Disney World. Many of them exciting, some of them a little sad because of the climate we live in currently. But all of these news and updates are obviously contingent on the healthcare situation in the United States and especially in Florida. At the time of filming, Florida has set a new record for new COVID cases in three of the last four days. The most recent tally has Florida at 4,000 daily new cases and they've continued to see a surge and spike since the beginning of June, when the quarantine and stay-at-home orders were lifted. Obviously, if things keep trending in that direction, there's no guarantees about any of the things that we laid out in this video, including the parks even opening on the dates that they're hoping. Hopefully, things don't deteriorate to that point. We're certainly hopeful. But of course, the most important thing is people's health and safety. So not to spoil the Disney fun, but it is worth watching those numbers in Florida, because as of right now, they are at least a little bit alarming. Hopefully, they can get the situation under control and we can all enjoy the parks that we love. Even if that means enduring no park hoppers and cancellations from time to time, we all just want to get back into the parks as safely and as quickly as possible. We hope you guys found our latest news helpful. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Ding that notification bell. And leave us a comment. If there is something that we missed, please leave it in the comments down below. There's been a lot of information that's been coming out, like we said, about magic bands, about the park reservation system, about ticketed events being canceled, a lot going on. So if you guys have any information we missed, please leave it in the comments down below so we know. And with that, we'll see you real soon. Bye. See you at the park as soon as it opens. <laughs> I mean, it's... She's excited for her first trip on the outside. She's been there three times on the inside, but she's hoping to get there on the outside. Yeah, I did go to Disney three times last year while pregnant. Once in every trimester. So as far as the Disney Park Pass system... In case you didn't know how serious I take this, I take it real serious. I don't know what that means. Because you have a Mickey's water glass. <laughs> we have a lot of Disney merch in this house. We leave no stone unturned. <sighs> so daddy, pay attention to me, dad. Love me, dad. When John and I were reading about this, <sighs>